Green. So like I said, this is week five. We'll be talking about the five XX notes. Um, I do see where I already have a question. Um, before I answer it, were there any questions about um, this last homework assignment? Overall, they looked really good. Um, it looks like you guys ha have gotten the hang of the three XX fields and the 336, the 337, the 338, um, and the 300. I do just watch out for your punctuation that if you're not using that subfield B, you don't use the full colon, you just use the semicolon. And uh, and there was kind of a tricky one there with the 336, 337, 338 with, uh, let me pull that up, with loyalty and death. Um, there, that one was kind of tricky because it's an audio book. And so some people um, weren't really sure what to do for the, um, I think it's the 336 there. Um, and so the, the the most correct answer is um, is sorry, let me pull that up. Um, the answers. So for that 336, uh, loyalty and death, um, spoken word um, is the ideal answer there because it's someone talking and, and, and telling a story. But um, unspecified or other can also work if you're not really sure what to put in there. Oh, no sound. Um... No sound. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, can you hear me now? Hello? If you can hear me, you know, can you can you type a question and tell me? I see where I have no sound. Okay. How about now?
Okay, can you guys hear me now? Okay, I've plugged in a new mic. Can you guys hear me now? Hello? Testing? The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. What about now? Okay, okay, I know what happened. I did not start broadcasting. Sorry about that. <laughs> and today, I, I don't have my allergies to blame. I, I only have myself and my own um, absent-mindedness, so... Thank you for bearing with me while I um, figure it out. Um, so like I was saying, uh, this is week five of Understanding Mark 21. We're going to be talking about the 5XX fields. I see I have a question from Mary. Um, before we a I answer that question, were there any questions about the last homework assignment with the 3XX fields, the 300, the 336, the 337, the 338? Uh, you guys seem to understand it. Um, just uh, a few reminders here. Um, um, if you're not using that subfield B, what you're going to do is skip. You won't use that colon to separate your A and your C. You'll use a semicolon. And um, I know not all of you work with audio cassettes but or CDs, but when you do, um, you know, you can note that that in the subfield B that there is sound or um, that it's analog. And then the other thing that was a little tricky was loyalty and death. It was a book on, on tape. And so for the A, spoken word is your best choice there. But if you're not sure, and this works in any situation, you know, other or unspecified can also work. And so if there aren't any questions, I will we'll go ahead and we'll get started on um, talking about the 5XX fields. And like I said, Mary Austin has a question. Um, should all 5XX fields end with a period? Excuse me, a period. Um, that's, I think in going through like some of the documentation, you know, it says this doesn't need to end with a period. But honestly, I think I end all of mine with a period. Uh, it really, honestly, it really doesn't matter. It's it's your personal preference. To me, it just looks kind of weird if there isn't a period there. So uh, I hope that answers your question. Okay, good, good. Were, were there any other questions uh, about the 5XX fields? Or any questions about the reading? This week, it, it definitely is a lot more straightforward than it has been previously. 
uh, there really weren't a lot of uh, changes as a result of RDA. And let me get out of all of that. Um, I do have a little PowerPoint we can go through. It just kind of, uh, it goes over the reading. Uh, some more examples. So let me pull that up. And let's see. And can everyone see that? Okay, good, good. So the, um, the 5XX fields are kind of, a lot of these fields, they're just kind of helpful fields. They're informational fields. They're not necessarily optional. Whether you include them or not, it, it depends on kind of your preference or your library, what your local policies are, uh, what kind of time you have, you know, what you're cataloging. Um, do any of you use the 5XX fields in your records? Okay, good, good, good. Any in particular that you use or you just go with the basics, the 500, the 505, the 520? I, I like them because I think they bring um, a lot of extra information for patrons that they they may or may not realize they need the 520 yep that's a good one to use that summary so let's go ahead and get started here which we're going to start with the 520 the field summary that that summary and um you know it's one i like to include i think it can be really helpful it's one that can be a lot of work. And so what I usually try to do is go, uh, if there's a publisher website, I might try and go and find something from the publisher. Um, oh, okay, I have another question here from Mary. On the assignment, the three complete books begins with a book title that begins with the. Is it a problem to start the 505 field with the, since a title search would not use the? I actually never thought about that before. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't think it matters because the 505 it's more of a keyword search and it it shouldn't I don't think it should be a problem. Let's see here. Let's um Oops, that's not what I wanted. Okay, go back. We'll do this. We'll go, I'm going to the OCLC. Make sure you guys can see that. To the OCLC Bibliographic Formats and Standards page and we'll pull up the 505 formatted contents. And I think in looking through here, I don't see any that start with the, like in looking through their examples. And so if you, if you are concerned that it may not pop up in a search, you could always take the off. Like I said, I've, I've never really thought about it because I think that is more of a keyword search. Does that answer your question, Mary? And I'm not seeing a response. I don't know if she's typing. If a patron knew that title, a title search would not bring it up. That's why I asked. Okay, um, if another option in that case is, 
you could always do if you have a lot of different titles in a book um there's different ways to add those in you can always do it like as a 246 or um and that that might be the simplest way or um you can go into the 700s and uh do like an added entry let's see here i don't do a lot of these because there are other ways to do it but you could do like a 740 and i believe that would pop in a title search sometimes it takes uh, a trial and error um you know to figure out exactly what's going to pop in a search and what you know between what you what you pop what pops up in a search and what you put into a mark catalog a mark record so if you use a 246 field three times would you need the 505 field two no i don't think i would use a 505 field because you're duplicating what that 246 is doing um, my rule of thumb is if you um, if the information is go going to be duplicated to take out some of that because you, you you don't want to have too much I guess too much information in a record you don't want it to appear over and over again does that make sense to everyone Okay, it makes sense to one person. That's good. Glad to hear that. And it looks like it's it's making sense to a couple of others as well. So are there any more questions? And you guys know it's always okay to pop in with questions whenever. So let me go back to my PowerPoint here. Make sure everyone can see that. Okay, let's do. Okay. So we were talking about the 520, that, that summary, and uh, different things you can do with it. You do have different indicators you can do. And we have another question. If a summary comes from the CIP info, is there any need to note that for the 520 field? You know, it really depends um, on your personal preference. If it's coming from like the back of a book and it's the same, or if um, it's coming from the publisher's website, you could always just go ahead and say from the publisher's website, um, or you could just leave it as is. Um, quite often, unless I write it myself, uh, I, I cheat and I try and find like something on the publisher's website or with a lot of the state documents I do, uh, I try to find like in the introduction, I try to find um, a note, like a sentence or two that kind of, you know, dis discusses what's going on. And, um, and then I'll, I'll say like in parentheses, I'll cite the information where it came from. And Mary's saying, I usually find CIP info on the Verso page. You could. You could say from Verso there. Um, how I say, oops, go back. Okay, clearly I am not very good with technology, so I apologize for that. Of course, you've, you probably figured that out by now. Um, but you can um, then just cite it and say from the Verso page. And did I answer your question? Okay, good. Um, and I will say for the most part here with the 520, with these indicators, I usually leave it blank, which indicates a summary. Um, sometimes I do do three for an abstract and that's, that's again, if I have found, like I do a lot of technical reports, it, um, and they're usually, it'll say abstract. And in that case, I'll, I'll use that indicator three for the abstract. 
And this is kind of what it looks like if you've kind of written your own. Um, sometimes it is easier to do that. And you can see where I, I have a hint here for one of the upcoming fields. With, with the 500, the 5XX fields, you know, these, this shouldn't be, like you shouldn't have to go and search for most of the information. Good, Lori, I'm glad to see that you're there. You, you missed out on the drama of my not being able to get my microphone to work because I hadn't actually started the presentation, but that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> anyway, like I was saying with the 5XX, you know, for the most part, this is all information you should be able to find on the item itself. And so here, like it says, winner of three Academy Awards. You know, if you feel like it, you can go ahead and put that in your 586 eight, field. But we'll talk about that later. And so we're just going through the 520. And that, you know, it can be a really easy way to, to add some information to a record. It helps your patrons. I think, um, you know, if there's a title of a movie uh, that's, you're, you're seeing the same. What I'm trying to say is if they've done a search for something and they've come up with several that are the same, it helps them differentiate between, you know, what they really want and what they're finding. So let's go on. And we are at the 505 and which again is is your contents and Mary was asking about this a little while ago and um, here in this case I probably would not do with the CD here I probably would not do an individual um, 246 uh, for each one of these songs um, you know, this is a case where, you know, depending on your ILS, it may pull up um, if they do a keyword search or a title search. Uh, well, it probably wouldn't pull up for a title search. You know, they're, they're, you might have to do some online searching first to, to kind of figure out what they're doing. But again, I just got this all from the back of the case. And here is, you have two options with the 505. You can either, let me go back here. You can either do a very simple one where you just use dashes to separate like the title or you can go ahead and if for example in this case or if you're working with a book like an anthology and you want to have the titles and the authors you can go ahead and do like a formatted a formatted note where you add another zero here in your indicator your second indicator and by doing it this way um you can it should pull up in your ILS if you do a title search. And so, Mary, back to your question, this could be another option. Why for you? Okay, this is from Rachel. Why is the first subfield an A? You know, that's a really interesting question. And and um, I think it's kind of just, for the most part, standard that it's a subfield A, not always. But let's we can go and check that and see what... Um, because that might be a typo on my part. Let me, we'll just end the show for now and get out. And let's pull that up. That's a really good question, actually, because I kind of wondered as I was making this slide and obviously never went back and checked. <laughs> And so in this example here where they call it an enhanced or a formatted, um, you can see where, let me, you can see where actually they do have a subfield T there. So I, I did make a typo there, so I will have to go fix that. I will post um, the slides after we're done. So good catch, Rachel. You're right, that should be a subfield T and not a subfield A. And so let me go back to my PowerPoint here. And and again, like I was saying, if you do go ahead and format everything, you it should then be visible like in a title search. 
So let's go on and see what the next field is. And we have another 505. And with this one, this is a book, obviously. And I don't necessarily, like, I don't necessarily go through and do chapter one, chapter two. I, I cut that off because to me that's kind of self-explanatory or not really that important. And just do like the name of the title there. And you can see that I do have a few here that, that begin with the road to gold or the rescue or the news spreads east. And let's see. Oh, this brings us to the 500 and 504 notes, and, which are the general and bibliographic, bibliography and index notes. Um, the 500 is your general. And Mary's saying, yes, both, both are just chapter titles for your, your, your book, correct. And like I said, if you really wanted to, you could do a 246 or you could go ahead and do, um, you could do a formatted note. And let's see if we can find an example in, let's see. And let's see. Um, you might be able to do something like this here. Like this 505 note, where both your indicators are zeros. And then you could just do um, that subfield T for a title you wouldn't need to do anything here in between and just go dash dash subfield T title. Does that make sense? That's probably the best way to handle something like that. Still don't know about the the at the title beginning. You know, I I don't know about that either, Mary. I really don't. Um, that may be one of those things where you kind of have to just, through trial and error, uh, you know, work on your record and then go look at it in the uh, on the front end. You know, and it could be you could just drop off the... Uh, sometimes I find I kind of have to play around with things if I'm not if I'm not sure how it's going to display or how it's going to sh you know if it's going to show up in a search. Sometimes I have to go in, and play around on the front end of the catalog, and, and and that can guide your cataloging decisions as well. Oh, good! I'm glad to hear that other people do that. Okay. So unless there's any more questions, we can go back and do the, um, oops, let's get rid of that too. Go back to the 500 and the, where are we here? And the 504. And I really like the 500. It's kind of a catch-all for everything. Um, you, you might remember from week two, I think, where we talked about the 245, how if your title comes from something other than the title page, you know, it's good to note where that came from. And you can also note, um, for example, um, on this, I, this document here, you know, on the front, it says April 2009. And I went ahead and noted that on my 500 in quotes. And that kind of, you know, it doesn't explicitly state that it's a publication date. Um, for that 2009, we're kind of assuming it is. It probably is. And having that 500 there kind of tells us exactly what's going on, that where we got the source of that 2009 date. And you can also note, um, if you've got bibliographical references, and if they're all kind of in one part, one one section, like a work cited or a bibliography, you you note specifically the pages where they're at. 
If not, if it's more like footnotes and they're scattered throughout, you, you don't need to note the pages that they're on. And then this brings us to the 546, and um, which tells us, you know, what kind of language is, is um, if it's got multiple languages, if it's in Spanish or English in this example, or here with Downton Abbey, you know, does it have subtitles? And again, this is information that's just going to come from the resource itself. Usually, like in the case of a, C a DVD, it's going to come from the back. Um, with a book, it, you would obviously know as you're going through the book. And you can also note if something is closed captioned. Uh, note that here too. And then um, that brings us up to the 508 and the 511 fields, which is they're tied into that 245 where it's just more uh, more information on the people who played a role in creating um, that item. Um, with the 508, you're going to use that mainly like with DVDs, with movies. And, and how detailed, how much detail you want, how many people you want to list here, that really depends on you, your workflow, your library. Um, you know, you can, like, I usually try to note the director and if there's writers. Um, you know, sometimes the music, sometimes the cinematography. And a lot of this information, again, is either going to be on the container or it's going to be, um, you know, in the movie credits. Uh, or if you want to double check something, you know, the Internet Movie Database is always a good place to go. And you can see there were a lot of people involved in the creation of this movie. Um, and I didn't note all of them because, again, you know, it's kind of comes down to time. And it, is this really it, is this really information that, you know, your patrons want? It, it's a judgment call that you have to make. And then uh, the 511 is, again, it's used for um, performers or participants. And you can use this, um, whereas the 58 was kind of, the, the 511, excuse me, the 511 is used for kind of, okay, that's not what I wanted. Sorry, I'm getting confused here. The 508 is used for, um, you know, kind of the behind the scenes people. The 511 is used for people who, um, you know, are in front of the camera, so to speak, or, you know, they're the people on the stage, or or um, if you're working with a CD, like a music CD, it, it's the people who play the instruments. And, um, again, this is information, like, for a CD, you'll find it on the liner notes, or I did find this website yesterday, Album Liner Notes, that has liner notes for a lot of CDs and a very wide variety. Excuse me. And you can see with the formatting down here that, you know, I just chose kind of, well, the band itself of you 2 And you separate um, each person by that semicolon there. And you can see where some of them play more than one instrument. So it's just... You separate those instruments um, by commas. And with the 511, or if you're doing it for an audio book, um, you know, it's the same thing. Um, we do what role they played. For example, here are the narrators, and then just list their names. And with the 511, um, for a movie, you can do the part they played in, in parentheses there. And here, we just used commas to separate everyone. And again, you know, how much detail you want to go into there is up to you. You know, you don't necessarily need to go through and list every single person who, you know, was in the movie. You can just hit, like, the main people. And this, now we have the 521 note which um, I don't use these a lot, and that's that's just because of the type of libraries I've worked in where the audience really um, isn't that important uh, for, for my, my catalog records. But if you work in a school library or a public library, it can be very useful uh, and very helpful for your patrons, um, for parents who are, who are looking for 
you know, books in a specific reading level, or um, I think it's lex, lexile, lextile score, or if it's part of a, a specific reading program, you can note a lot of that in the 521. And, you know, as usual, there's a lot of different ways to note information. Um, here, you can see if I use just a, a zero in the first indicator, um, I have a two, which is level two, which is, is going to display as reading grade level two. Or because that two, that level two may not necessarily mean grade level, it just means level two, which when you look at the back kind of gives you an idea of what that means. You can do um, an eight in that first indicator and um, it, nothing will display there. It'll just say level two. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, good, good. And it looks like, oh, okay, no. And Catherine, what exactly? Oh, you're wondering about that eight, okay. So let me go into, um, oh, let's go back here. Let's go. here to, we're back at the OCLC website. And like I've, I've said on numerous occasions, okay, what do you mean by it not displaying? Okay. So in that audience note, you have a lot of choices here when it comes to your indicators. And some of these indicators, if you put in a zero, uh, for example, it tells the computer to display reading grade level before whatever whatever information you have in the field itself. And so depending on what you want to display there, um, that means you don't have to type in reading grade level, that that will automatically display for you. And if you're not really sure what or if anything should, you can do, in this case, an eight and no display. It, not, the computer won't display anything other than what you just have in the field itself. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah, yeah, rather than putting it into a 500. And you can always put that, you can always put a lot of this information into a 500 note. Uh, sometimes it's just easier. Um, I do that sometimes, you know, there may be a better, a better field it goes into, but um, I get kind of lazy <laughs> and <laughs> just like, yeah, let's just put this in a 500. Let's make it easy. And good. I'm glad, Lori, that the indicators are finally starting to make sense. They, there's a lot of them and they mean various things depending on which field you're working in. And so that's why I use this website a lot, this OCLC with the, um, the indicators and your fields and how things should be formatted is because each one, if you've used it, you notice each one starts at the top by telling you what the indicators are. And then if you go down through, you know, it explains them in detail and then as you go through, and for some of them, you know, when there's a lot of subfields, we'll give you examples that are specifically for those subfields and, and for those indicators. So I've got a couple of questions here. Um, we'll go back to the first one here. From the assignment, the last item has optional English subtitles on the cover. Would you write it just like that in the 546 field or leave out the word optional? That's a really good question. And, you know, I, I might be tempted just to pop that into a DVD player and, and pull that up and, and see exactly what that means. Um, because most subtitles are optional, I think. Um, but I probably, you know, like I said, I would probably, you know, I'd actually pull it up and see kind of what that looks like. Um, 
but it, it, that's kind of catalogers judgment. You, I, neither, not, neither one's incorrect. It's whatever you prefer it to be. And then we have another question down here. Let me scroll down to it. I'm wondering about the item that mentions an age range when you don't know if it's an interest level or a reading level. Okay, that's another really good question. And it looks like we do have, um, we have that option here of interest age level or interest grade level. And what you could do, you know, you can either, you can guess or, and, and choose like interest age level. Um, or what you can always do is just skip down and use that indicator eight where no display constant is generated and, and say, you know, type out age range and then whatever the age range is. Does that answer your question, Mary? Okay, good, good. Yeah, there's a lot of different options with cataloging, um, as many you, many of you have probably discovered. You know, you don't. There's not always a right answer, and I know some people have a really hard time with that. I I personally don't. I, I like to understand why a decision got made, and so that that's kind of what I obsess about sometimes is why it was done that way, and I got to go look it up and understand. And but that's just me. So unless there's any more questions about the 521 or anything else, really, we'll go back. So are we all good to go on the 521 and understanding how those indicators work and your various options there? Okay, good, good. Let's go on. And you can also use the 521. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, Lori, for right now, you're good to go. That's, yeah, sometimes it feels that way when you're learning something where you understand it in the moment. And then it's like in high school and in, in algebra or pre calculus. Um, you know, I'd understand it in class. I'd go home and try to do my homework, and it was like, what what the heck? This this doesn't make any sense to me, and, and yeah. Anyway, um, you can also do, like, movie ratings here. <laughs> and I know it, it, for some people, you know, knowing what a movie, a movie is rated is, is very important. And so if you are doing a lot of DVDs, a lot of movies, this is a great place to note what it's rated and you would use, again, that indicator 8, which doesn't have a display, doesn't say anything like rated or uh, appropriate. Um, what's going to display is just what you have typed in, rated PG-13. Or um, if you wanted to include the, um, the MPAA, the, that agency, that association that um, assigned it, you can do that as well. And then um, we have the 526 field where if it's, um, they call it the study program information note. It's kind of like things like I was saying earlier, if it's a part of like a reading program or the Lextile, I think it's Lextile, um, those kinds of things. You can note that here in the 526. And again, it's, it, that should be something that's noted on the record uh, or noted on the item itself, not always. And depending on how you get your records, if you get them from a vendor, that may be something that comes in already. Um, did you notice the third indicator on your last slide? Let me go back. Oh! <laughs> Thank, thank you, Mary. You guys have really sharp eyes. I clearly don't, I don't, clearly I don't proof these before I post them. Um, I will, I will go ahead and make that change before I post them. No, no, there, the 521 doesn't have three indicators. I just um, got a little carried away in making my spaces there. So thank you, Mary. Um, here, 
um, we've got, you know, if you want to note, like if it's part of a, a national like book club, like Oprah's book club, you can do that. Or, um, you know, locally on your local records, um, if it's been a part of something, um, you could always note that as well. If it's been used, um, you know, by your library's book club or something like that. Um, and the 586 is the uh, the awards note. And again, this is something I, I don't use a lot and um, it's just the nature of what I catalog. But I know a lot of public libraries really like to note if they've won awards because for some people, they're really into reading those award winners. And um, what you can do, you know, if something's won like the Golden Sour, this is a great time to note, you know, hey, it won the Golden Sour and what year and... Let's see. Oh, and that's the end of the slideshow. So, um, are there any questions right now before I move on to talking about the upcoming assignment? Okay, good, good. I, I'm assuming it's all as clear as mud. So the assignment for this week, and it's it's very similar to what you know we've been doing, where we have the slides and and then the questions. You know what what you need to do here. And for this week, it's just, um, you know, going through and creating different kinds of the 5XX notes for some of the items, um, doing a contents or a summary, um, create the proper 5XX field regarding statement of responsibility for loyalty and death. And that just has to do, since that is a book on tape, that has to do with like, um, if there was a narrator or, you know, anyone who might've been involved in the production of that book. Um, it asks us to do an audience note for Diary of a Worm and a language note for Diary of a Worm. Diary of a Worm is, is getting a lot of work this week, so. Are there any other questions? Like I said at the beginning, this is, you know, the 500 notes, the 5XX, they're pretty straightforward. And, you know, the indicators get a little confusing and the subfields, depending on how complicated you want to be, but you can keep it very simple. So if there aren't any questions, we'll go ahead and call it a day. Uh, I do want to remind you guys, if you are taking this for CE credit through the Library Commission, you do need to get all your assignments in. And um, I think that's it. If you're not, you know, if you don't want to do the assignment, that's, that's up to you. And if you've got any questions this week, you know, uh, let me know, email me, and I'll go ahead and answer them for you. So um, have a good weekend. I get tomorrow off because it's Arbor Day. That's a new thing for me. <laughs> but I will be back in the office on Monday. So thanks, you guys. And I will talk to you next week, if not before.